GraphQL is a query language for APIs that simplifies client development. Now, how does this simplify client development? Well, GraphQL servers are served from a single endpoint, so the client application only needs to know about that single endpoint in order to make all of its requests. Another major feature of GraphQL is that the client can ask the GraphQL server for the exact data that it needs. This is much different than something like REST, where the client might make a request to the server and get tons of data back, or it might make a request and get not enough data back, and then have to make another request, which is pretty terrible if the network latency is bad. So in this series, we're gonna be building a .NET GraphQL client application using the Strawberry Shake package, and we're gonna see just how easy it is. Now, I have another series where I go over how to build a GraphQL server, and this series is gonna be in parallel with that series, and that series is also in .NET and uses the hot chocolate GraphQL server package. So we're using hot chocolate for the server and strawberry shake for the client. And as you may have guessed by the names, they are maintained by the same team. So here in my solution, I did mention that I have another series where I build a GraphQL server and that server is in the solution, the GraphQL demo dot API. Now I'm not gonna be debugging this server in this series. So right now I just have it running in the background and we'll be building our client against this server. So in the solution, I am also gonna create a new project for our GraphQL client application. So let's create a new project. This is just gonna be a console application. So nothing fancy like Blazor or WPF. Just wanted to keep it simple and focus on GraphQL and Strawberry Shake, can't forget that. So this is gonna be the GraphQL demo.client. Let's create that. I am gonna be targeting .NET 5 here. Hopefully this works on future versions of .NET, but let's go ahead and create our project. And before we get started, let's set this as the startup project. And most importantly, let's get started with Strawberry Shake. Now, Strawberry Shake actually requires us to install a .NET tool so that we can generate our GraphQL schema. So we're gonna take our project, right click, and open this in the terminal so that we can run some commands. And I do not want to install this tool globally. So what I'm gonna do is create a .NET tool manifest. So to do that, we can run .NET new tool manifest. There we go, created successfully. And now we just want to install the strawberry shake tools. So .NET tool install, this is strawberry shake dot tools. And we do want to install this locally. So we can do a dash dash local run that. And if we look at our tool manifest in our project, it did add strawberry shake tools. So now that we have our strawberry shake tools, we're ready to generate our GraphQL client schema. So the way strawberry shake does this is it actually hits our GraphQL server and gets the schema from there and then generates the schema in our project. So to do this, we will run .NET and we'll take the GraphQL tool that we just installed with Strawberry Shake and we will init. So initializing our GraphQL client project, it's gonna pull the schema from HTTP colon slash slash. Let me bring up my console. So we are running our server at localhost 5000. Let me just copy this. So this does have to be running so that we can actually hit the server from this command. And let's go ahead and run this. Before we do that, we need to specify the GraphQL endpoint. So that's the actual endpoint that we're serving our GraphQL server from, the single endpoint for GraphQL. And let's run this. And there we go, downloaded the schema. And we got some client configuration. Let's look at all this stuff that we got here. So our schema, we have a query type and we can query for instructions. And if you're unfamiliar with the server, which I go over in my series where we create a GraphQL server, we have our schema here and all we have is a query type and we have instructions. So that does indeed match the schema that was downloaded when we ran that command. And then we have schema extensions, not really anything we have to mess with here because again, this was just all generated. And then we have our GraphQLRC.json and this has a bunch of configuration regarding the strawberry shake code generation. And by code generation, I don't just mean the schema that it downloaded from our server. I mean like actual C sharp code generation which is gonna give us everything we need to hit our GraphQL server. But in order to use it, even though we got our schema downloaded, we do need to install some NuGet packages so that we can set up that code generation and actually hit our server. So there's a few packages that we have to install. Let's start searching for strawberry shake. So we need to install strawberry shake.transport.http, which makes sense because we're hitting our GraphQL server over HTTP. So let's install that. And then we also need strawberry shake.codegeneration.csharp 
dot analyzers. So this is what is going to do the code generation. So definitely need that. That's going to be fun. And then lastly, we do need Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection because the generated strawberry shake code does provide an extension method so that we can add all of the strawberry shake services to a service provider. So we are going to install that. And now we are almost ready to do that magical code generation, but I do want to head into my GraphQL RC.json and configure this a little bit. So what we can do is provide a namespace for our generated code to go in. So I just want this to go into the GraphQL demo.client namespace, which in this case is just our default project namespace. And then I do want the name of my strawberry shake client to have no dot in it. So just GraphQL demo client. And that's actually everything I want to do. Keep in mind there is other configuration here. You can have single file as false if you wanted. So that's one thing with this code generation is it puts everything in one single file, which I kind of like because it's generated code. I don't really want to look at it anyways. You can change where the generated code goes. So we're going to see it's going to go into a folder called generated. And actually, you know what? Let's see it. So we should just be able to build our project and see the strawberry shake code get created. So let's build and actually nothing happened. So nothing happened because we haven't defined any queries or any kind of GraphQL documents in our project. So it doesn't really have anything to generate. So what we're going to do is create a simple query. I'll put it in a folder called query. So create that folder query, and we're going to have a single file in here. And this query is going to query for the instructions on our GraphQL server. So I'm going to call this the instructions query and the file type here is dot graphql so definitely need to specify that because that's the file type of graphql documents and that is the file type that strawberry shake is looking for so i did create this but put a class in here i don't want that so let's just delete all that now if you aren't familiar with the query language for graphql no worries we are going to learn throughout the series so for example, here, we're going to be executing a query. So not a mutation, not a subscription. We'll get to the more advanced stuff later in this series. And I'm going to name this query instructions. So you can pretty much name it anything here. This is just an identifier. So we're going to execute a query. And what can we query for? Well, if we look at our schema on our server, we have this query type. And the things that we can query for are instructions. So that is what I'm going to query for. We can just copy this and paste that in there. I'm going to keep it lowercase. That's usually the convention that I use. And when we run this, we should get our instructions back. Smash that like button and subscribe to Single to Chon. But that should be everything for our simple query. Although, actually, I want to call my query get instructions. And I guess this name kind of is important because this is the name that's going to be used in the code generation to actually execute the query. So I do want it to read a little bit better. And the last thing I want to do is actually name this folder queries because we're going to have multiple queries in here, not just one. And now if we build this, we should see our generated strawberry shake code. So let's build and we get nothing. So I have experienced this before. And for some reason, strawberry shake actually wants our GraphQL documents in the root of the project. So if we take our query and move it to the root of our project, so I just plop that over there and then try building again. There we go. We get our generated code. But what if I bring back that queries folder? So let me just add that back into the project and then move our query back in there, delete the generated code and then try building again. And it generates the strawberry shake code, even though our query is inside of a folder, which for some reason didn't work before. I mean, we can even delete it again, clean our project, and then build again, and it still successfully generates. So keep an eye out for that issue. If you experience it, just move your query or whatever GraphQL document to the root of your project. But now we have our generated GraphQL demo client using Strawberry Shake. Now we are ready to use it. So I did mention this does require dependency injection. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. All we need is a service collection. We can import that and create a new service collection. And we can take our service collection and add GraphQL demo client right here in the IntelliSense. So this is the generated strawberry shake code. And we do not have to import anything here because if we look at our generated code, it's already in our GraphQL demo.client namespace, which is the same as our program.cs. And we can select an execution strategy here. So strawberry shake does have a cache for the queries that we make. So we can select cache first, meaning it'll check the cache to see if we've already executed the query. If we have, it'll return the cache data. 
If we haven't, then it'll hit the network. And then we have cash and network. This is mostly used for subscriptions, I believe, where it'll return the cash data immediately and then still make a network request. And then when the network request comes back, it'll trigger the subscription. And then lastly, we have network only, which is the traditional pretty much no cash at all. And that is the default and that's what we're gonna use for now so we don't have to select anything here. And then we can continue to configure this so we can configure an HTTP client. That's pretty much the only configuration that we have here, which we are gonna do. So this is also useful for things like configuring authentication through your HTTP client. But the most important thing, which we are gonna configure is the base address for our GraphQL server. So we can take our HTTP client in this action callback and configure the base address to be a new URI. And our server is running at HTTP colon slash slash localhost 5000. And our GraphQL endpoint is slash GraphQL. So that's the only service that we're gonna register because that's all we really have in our application. So now let's build our service provider. So we can take our service collection and build the service provider. And now that we have our service provider, we can use that to resolve our GraphQL demo client. So that is an I GraphQL demo client. That's from our generated code. And this name comes from the name that we specified in our GraphQL RC JSON. So we'll just call this client and resolve that from our service provider. Get required service. This is the I GraphQL demo client. And now we're gonna take our client and execute our instructions query. So if we look at client, it has a get instructions property. So this name get instructions, of course, comes from the name that we specified in our instructions query, get instructions. And this query is gonna execute a query for instructions. Makes sense. So we can take that get instructions property and we're gonna execute this asynchronously. So executing the query, this gives us back an I operation result, which is also part of our generated code. And to get that, we are gonna to have to await this get instructions query. So let me make my main an async task. And now our query has been executed. We'll see this in action in just a second, but we can take our result and we can get our data on here. We can check for errors. There's also some useful extension methods. So one I like to use is is error result and this gives us back a true or false so i'm going to wrap this in an if statement and if it was an error then i'm just going to console write line failed to get instructions but if it was not an error then i will console write line the instructions so that's in our result in our data and data could technically be null we see this question mark on the end so i'm going to optionally chain here and i want to get the instructions from our data which are important to follow so let's go ahead and run this. We're gonna step through it from when we build the service provider. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, so gonna resolve our client from our service provider. Let's do that. Boom, done. So it was successfully registered. Now we are going to execute our get instructions query. Let's do it. Boom, done. Let's look at our result. All kinds of nice stuff in here. Errors, no errors, that's great. Look at our data. Ooh, instructions, smash that like button and subscribe to Singleton Sean. That is wonderful. So if we step over this, we did not have an error result. And now we will write our information to the console, but we didn't get to see it. So let me put a read key in here so that we can see it. We don't need breakpoints anymore. And there we go, success. So just to summarize, we set up our project, installed the Strawberry Shake tools, which we used to generate our GraphQL client schema which was downloaded from our GraphQL server. And then we installed a bunch of NuGet packages to set up Strawberry Shake. And then we built our project and it didn't work because we didn't have a query defined. So we set up a simple query and then we tried to build again. Still couldn't generate the code because the query was in this folder. So we moved it out and then we built again. It generated the code and then we moved it back in here and the generation still worked. And then lastly, all we did was set up our service provider, registered our strawberry shake generated GraphQL demo client, resolved the client, executed our query, and then wrote out the result. So a pretty simple example, pretty much just the bare essentials to getting started with GraphQL on the client side with strawberry shake, but we'll be doing more advanced things like more advanced queries, mutations, subscriptions, and other useful things like authentication, especially as I start to implement those things on the GraphQL server side with hot chocolate. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in GraphQL on the server side, check out my hot chocolate series, which will be running parallel with this series. But if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe.
for more. Thank you.